Surrealism and the Exquisite Corpse. Here's the lesson overview. This is what's due on Monday, May 25. So here I break down exactly how you can get to um, a full 105 points for this assignment. So if you've completed the assignment on time, you automatically get 10 points. The drawing on slide four is worth 35 points, so you have to insert a drawing. There's a written response that you have to insert also on slide four, that's worth another 35 points. Then there's a discussion prompt, which you can find on slide five, and that's worth 20 points. And then there's an optional extra credit question or two on slide six, and that's where that additional five points comes from. Here's the performance-based objective. Students will be able to practice group work skills and drawing skills in order to collaboratively create a work of art. So this week we're going to be looking at surrealism. So surrealism was an artistic movement embraced by artists between 1924 and 1920, excuse me, and 1945, the end of World War II. There's an example. This is a painting by Salvador Dali on the right. We'll see more of his work in a moment. Surrealism is really a cool period of art to look at. There's so much detail, so many weird, wacky things. It's really fun. The surrealists believed in expressing the subconscious, the part of the mind that we are not fully aware of that influences our thoughts, feelings, and actions. These artists were particularly interested in what dreams can tell us. Some surrealist artists include, as we just said, Salvador Dali. He's a great example. This is one of his self-portraits on the right. Yves Tangui. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think that's right. These aren't really recognizable shapes, but it kind of looks like they're floating in the sky or something. And Marcel Duchamp. He was a painter, but also a sculptor. Lastly, but not least, Man Ray. Man Ray was a photographer. And way before Photoshop, he was able to edit photos and do really amazing things with just a camera and film. So this week we're going to be playing a game. This is a very popular game invented by surrealists called Exquisite Corpse. Surrealists used this funky exercise to tap into their subconscious. It's a game played with groups of friends. In this game, each participant draws part of a figure without knowing what the other players have drawn. The whole figure, which might be a monster, it might be a person, it might be an animal, is revealed at the end. Artists today still play this game. Not only is it fun, but it can inspire artists and give them new ideas for bigger works of art. On the left is an exquisite corpse made by two artists who are also siblings named Jake and Dinos Chapman. If we were doing this project in school, of course you'd be paired with a couple classmates, but just like Jake and Dinos Chapman work together in their artwork, you're going to be doing this with your loved ones. Here are a bunch of wacky, fun examples of exquisite corpses. Think about all the details you see as I go through these. These are examples by students, and you can see that they used a lot of pattern in the background of their work as well as coloring in the figures. These are drawings by kids who are probably a little bit younger than you, but they are so detailed and well done. Look at all that color and pattern. All right, so here's your assignment. Create an exquisite corpse figure with the help of one or more loved ones. Then bring the figure to life using color. That's your job. Last, give the figure a name and describe its background. 
So this is what you're going to need for this assignment. One piece of paper. This can be a plain piece of paper. It can be a recycled piece of paper. It can be a lined piece of paper from a notebook. Whatever you've got. You're going to need a pencil or a pen. And then for the coloring section, colored pencils, crayons, markers, or watercolors. Really, it's whatever you have at home. Here are the steps. First, find one, two, or three drawing partners. Folding your paper vertically folds that paper into three or four sections. You're going to see, I'm going to play a video example of how I did this project, and you'll see how I do this. Then person one draws the head. At this point, you're only using pencil. So it's your job to do all the coloring at the end. When the person is done with the head, fold the paper back to hide the drawing. And then mark at the top of the crease where the neck begins. So the next person knows exactly where to start. Person two is then going to draw the torso. Here's an example. I really like this example. Look at all those details. So if you're doing this project with one other person or two other people, the third step is going to be to draw the legs. However, if you split this sheet into four sections and you're doing this with three other people, you can add a second torso. So here you go, torso one, torso two. Becomes kind of like a caterpillar. And then the last person's gonna draw the legs. Then, it is your job to add color to the entire figure. So you can choose the material, either colored pencils, markers, crayons, or watercolor, whatever you have at home. That's what you're going to add color with. Here's my example. I'll walk you through the whole project. To get started, take a piece of paper and hold it horizontally. Fold it into three or four sections and then unfold it. In this video, I label each section. One, two, three. For the head, the body, and the torso. It might be helpful for you to do that, but it's not something you have to do. I did this project with one drawing partner, so I'm going to do the head and the legs. My partner is going to do the torso. If you're doing this with two people, each one of you can take a section, and if you're doing it with four people, then you could fold the paper a fourth time and do two torsos. This assignment is extremely open-ended. Kind of anything can be the head of your figure. Maybe it's an animal head, maybe it's a cartoon character that you really love, or maybe it's a random object. You'll see I add a few more details to my car head and then I fold the paper backwards so that my drawing partner can't see what I just drew. Look closely, you can see that the necklines actually go over the crease of the paper into the next person's section. That's so the next person knows exactly where to start. Now you'll see my drawing partner draw the torso or the body of the figure. Once person two is ready, fold the paper backwards again and hand it off to person three. In my case, that was me again. Mm -hmm. 
unfold your drawing and admire your creation. Then you're going to have to get your coloring materials. So remember, you can use watercolor, you can use colored pencil, markers, crayons, whatever you have at home, whatever is easiest for you. I use a tiny little watercolor set to color in my figure. Whatever coloring material you end up using, make sure that you're applying it carefully. Make sure that there aren't little pencil strokes if you're using colored pencil, if, that you're not scribbling with marker, and that there aren't big areas of white where there could be color. This is important because our exquisite corpse drawings are going to be shown to our peers and we're going to use them again next week in our assignment. Now that doesn't mean your exquisite corpse needs to be perfect. Nobody's perfect, nobody's artwork is perfect. But it means that you have to put your time and effort into the assignment. And honestly, it's a lot of fun. You're going to have a good time doing it. I wanted to make sure to add little details. So I even gave him socks and I put in a little bit of a background, at least a horizon line, so it really looks like he's running. Here is my final work of art. He's a real character. Here is the form, the template, that you're going to put your work into. So you're going to put your exquisite corpse on the right. So as always, I included links to videos that will help you insert pictures into your Google Slides doc. So you can click there. Hey there. Watch these videos, which will tell you how to insert your drawings. You're going to write your name at the top of the form, insert a picture of your exquisite corpse drawing, and then give your character a name answer where might this character live and did you enjoy the random aspect of this game here's my example so you can see on the right <clears throat> I did this work of art with one other drawing partner I drew the head my drawing partner drew the body and then I drew the legs then I spent time coloring in this figure I even gave it a ground line. You could design the entire background for your drawing if you want to. And then I answered the questions. The last step for this project is to complete the discussion question at this link. So you're going to click here. And it's going to take you to this question. What are some advantages of working collaboratively? So that means working with drawing partners. So you are going to type your answer in full sentences into this bar here. Blah, 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 blah. And then you'll press turn in. Once you submit your answer, you can even respond to your peers' answers. Okay, once you answer, answer that discussion question, you can press turn in, or you can submit these two extra credit questions for five points. Based on what we know about surrealism, how could this movement have inspired the game, Exquisite Corpse? And how can this game inspire future works of art?